Welcome everyone to this Lightboard session where we're going to learn a little bit more about vSAN. In this session, we're going to uh, look at some of the data placement and resilience options within the vSAN Express storage architecture found in vSAN 8. So with the older storage architecture, you often had to have a bit of thought between whether you used a RAID 1 mirroring type protection basis, which was better at performance, or a RAID 5 or RAID 6, which was better at capacity, but also had some kind of caveats on how small your cluster could scale down to. Um, you had to have a minimum of four hosts for even the RAID 5 in that case. With the Express Storage architecture, we've tried to get the benefits of both worlds. We've tried to get the ability to optimize capacity, and some of that comes from no longer needing discrete cache devices and all the, the devices capacity being available, but also being able to make it to where you can use the RAID 5 protection method on as few as three hosts, be able to scale this down. Um, and so by getting these benefits to where the performance um, very much behaves as a RAID 1 using the performance leg, the initial writes land on a mirrored structure, and then the capacity leg structure, where that data goes out to for the capacity overhead, um, this kind of gives us the best of both worlds. Yeah, and you know, one may look at this initially and, and sit there and you think, well, wait a minute, if I'm making a write uh, from a VM uh, or a VMDK uh, and it's landing with this sort of a data structure, doesn't that look like that there's gonna be a lot of writes occurring? And the answer is no, once we understand how this works uh, a little better. One of the layers in the uh, stack of the Express Storage Architecture is a log-structured file system. And this is a way that we're able to um, uh, coalesce a lot of these little small writes and make them into this really efficient, fully aligned block so that then they can be written out in a very efficient full stripe write. So here, even though we are ingesting um, the, the, uh, the incoming writes that may be very small, in a very quick way in the performance leg, we're setting it up so that then a single larger write uh, can occur for that very efficient full stripe write. That's where we're in fact saving a lot of, of opportunities or, or excess IO activity and computational activity that would normally occur in sort of um, read, modify, write, uh, uh, storage IO patterns. And there's some other benefits to this. So as you mentioned, you know, previously RAID 5 or RAID 6, you had this read, write, modify cycle, and that added latency, that added time, that added additional network hops in a distributed system uh, versus always doing a full stripe update. You know, simplifying that down, that reduces the amount of IO amplification. There's other things to think about within this structure. We're actually, now that we do compression on the initial first write, where before, you know, that didn't happen until D stage, we're doing encryption on first write and it stays with encrypted with the same key through all the data movement. We're actually finding other ways to reduce the amount of CPU overhead as well as any potential IO amplification for things like metadata and checksums. One of the things that we're doing also here with this uh, data structure is we are uh, protecting the performance leg and the capacity leg at that same level of resilience, the FTT equals two. So in a sense, this is considered a three-way mirror so that in a sense it could uh, tolerate a few different failures just as the capacity leg could tolerate a few different failures. If this storage policy was changed over uh, to a RAID 5 uh, using a 4 plus 1 uh, data scheme, this is where one of those uh, components on the uh, performance leg would be limited because this is simply a two-way mirror because it's a level of failure to tolerate of 1 and now we're using a four plus one uh, data placement arrangement. So a lot of flexibility in all of this, uh, and we really think many of our customers are going to realize uh, this benefit as well. If you'd like to learn more about uh, this type of data placement scheme, as well as all new things about the vSAN Express storage architecture, feel free to go out to core.vmware.com, uh, and thank you very much.